2013 has been called the year of the comet. These dirty snowballs hurtling through space are like time capsules from the early days of our solar system or from the universe itself. The first mission to dig into one of these time capsules is already underway. So that got us wondering, how do you land a probe on a comet? So, how do you land a probe on a comet? The Rosetta mission does land a probe on a comet, but it's actually a complex mission. It has an orbiter, which is actually quite large, and then a lander, which is stuck on the side and gets deployed, and that's much smaller. The orbiter is in the vicinity of the comet for a couple of years, but near the beginning of the mission, when the comet is still far away from the sun, the, uh, the orbiter will actually essentially throw the lander toward the comet to land on the comet. How big is this comet? How big a target are you trying to hit? The comet is about a, a mile or a mile and a half across. One thing you have to remember is the comet has almost no gravity. So the spacecraft has some launching system that mechanically pushes the lander away at a fairly slow speed, probably from something like a mile away. And then there's no control of it, so they have to be close enough and aim it so that it hits the surface. And then at that point, there's a set of spikes that are launched out to hopefully firm it, attach it to the surface, and so it won't bounce off. What can the probe find out once it's at and on the comet? The lander will have instruments to measure surface properties. It will have a contraption that bores itself down through the surface to measure the temperature and, and composition below the surface. And of course, it has cameras. It has broad cameras, so once it lands on the surface, we'll be able to see what it's like to stand on the surface of a comet, and it even has microscope type cameras to look very carefully at the material. What can the surface and composition of a comet tell you about the universe? Comets were the, were the first objects that formed in the outer solar system when the solar system formed four and a half billion years ago. And the material in comets has been in these small bodies, mostly very far from the sun, for the last four and a half billion years. By looking at the material that the comet's made of, we're basically looking at the state of the solar system four and a half billion years ago. We hope that there's actually some remnant material from interstellar matter that the solar system formed from also. And by measuring detailed compositions, we hope to be able to tell what the state of the, uh, the solar system was like four and a half billion years ago, and even possibly what some of the interstellar material was like that the solar system formed from. Why is the Rosetta mission important? We've had several flybys of comets. We've never had a mission which actually gets to the comet and follows it as, it's, as it sublimates and forms its atmosphere for a long period of time. And the most important thing is that we actually have a lander which will touch down on the surface and measure material directly. The Rosetta spacecraft is scheduled to begin orbiting its target comet in May of next year, and the probe should land in November. So while 2013 may be the year for viewing comets from Earth, we'll have to wait until 2014 and 2015 to find out what these cosmic time capsules are really made of.